Thank you. Hey, I'm Nick Bayer, welcome to Pocket for Monday the 20th of June. Today on the show, Sue Hammers, Who Owns the Sky, and a whole mess of games. What are the odds? It's the game release episode. First off, and a few concrete details about Xbox Play Anywhere have been released over the weekend. The Play Anywhere program will allow you to save to the cloud and pick up your progress on other devices, tracks a single set of achievements on your Xbox Live account, and won't cost any more than a regular game. So far, there are 12 games planning to launch with the service, but you do have to purchase the games digitally for Play Anywhere to work. No Man's Sky developer Hello Games can finally use the word sky in the title of their own game, which is out very shortly and I don't know if they had a backup plan. Are there just a bunch of posters sitting in a cupboard? that's just say no man's dot 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 redacted because that's a terrible name for a game no man's redacted on friday studio founder sean murray posted this tweet which says that after three years the company have settled their lawsuit with uk owned sky tv who apparently own the word sky this was a big win for Hello Games as Sky TV had successfully forced Microsoft to change the name of their cloud sharing service from SkyDrive to OneDrive back in 2013, thereby rendering that service shit. No word yet on whether or not they'll drop their lawsuit against the actual Sky, which in the meantime, as you know, we must legally refer to as the moon hole. Moving on now and Fallout 4 mods coming to PS4, but before that, Bethesda have implemented some changes to prevent mod piracy. After mods were released on Xbox One, many PC mods were being taken and uploaded to the service by third parties without their owner's permission. Naturally, this upset many original creators of the mods who put in a lot of work and missed out on any credit. Now, as an additional measure, anyone who wants to upload a mod will be required to log into a Steam-linked Bethesda.net account. Moving on and Valve are attempting to limit the number of exclusives amongst VR headsets. In an email exchange with Reddit user El Polo Diablo 187 Gabe Newell described developing for VR as a triple risk whammy for a new developer creating new game mechanics on a new platform. To minimize this risk and encourage a thriving VR development industry, Valve will be offering no strings attached funding to VR developers. According to Gabe, we're in a much better position to absorb financial risk than a new VR developer, so we're happy to offset that by giving developers funds, essentially prepaid Steam revenue. Our hope is that by providing funding, developers will be less likely to take on deals that require them to be exclusive. This is a great idea because the idea of purchasing the wrong VR headset is one of the main reasons I haven't purchased any VR headset. Moving on now, and Twitch are dropping the ban hammer. And by ban hammer, I do of course mean Sue Hammer, which sounds much much less like a punishment for bad behavior, and much more like the star of WWE Divas. As part of a general declaration of Twitch policy, the company will be taking legal action on users who sell view bots. These are used to artificially increase the amount of views and followers on a channel. Twitch has also stated that some of these services can be used to harass other broadcasters in order to attempt to deny them partnership or get their channel suspended. Twitch will be targeting a handful of sellers who are most active in distributing the view bots to users. Matthew DiPitrio, Senior Vice President for Twitch, also went on to say that ultimately, the best way to stop view bot sellers from profiting off empty promises is to not buy their services. And we all know that simple human reasoning always works with the Twitch community. All right, now it's time to drop the thing of the day hammer. It's a tiny hammer. That's why Pete shoots me with all the pixels he can find. Pete, zoom in and show me off. Thing of the day. Tyke Jen was the real hero while playing Heroes and Generals, pulling off quite the shot on an unsuspecting pilot who took an unscheduled dip. The real winner here, though, were lovers of surprised Norwegian faces. No! No way! I that is just f you. What the f? No way. Uh, 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 well. That's why Pete shoots me with all the pixels he can find. Pete, zoom in and show me off. Thing of the day. All right, it's This Week in Games time, where I'll be letting you know what's coming out this week in games, and we'll start, as we always do, with the MPD stats for the week ending June 12th. Although we don't always, you know, go with June 12th. We go with whatever week the MPD stats end on. I'm just saying we always start with the MPD stats. 
Number one on the list is Overwatch, continuing its domination. They don't call it Overwatch for nothing. It's not called Under Number One Watch, because that's a terrible name for a game. Number two, Grand Theft Auto V. Number three, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Number four, Doom. Number five, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Number six, Far Cry Primal. Number seven, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. Number eight, FIFA 16. Number nine, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. And number 10, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I smell a console bundle! Moving on now to games that are coming out this week that most certainly won't crack the top 10. Starting with Deadlight Director's Cut on Xbox One, PS4 and PC which comes out tomorrow. If you're into tactical role-playing games then you should fire up the PS4 and download Grand Kingdom. Or you could head to your bedroom, open up your bedside table drawer, empty it out, find your Vita, dust it off, realize it's flat, find the proprietary USB cable to charge it, have certainly lost the charger power brick, Google cheap Vita power bricks, balk at the price and the amount of time it's gonna get to get to you, take the Vita out to the living room, plug it into the PS4 which you fired up earlier, wait three hours to charge and then download the game there. I don't know why that console is doing so badly. And while you wait for both of those things to happen, you can get Pac-Man 256 on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Though you've probably already got that on your phone for free. Getting the itch to build something? Well, that could be scabies, so I would definitely check that out. Nobody wants scabies. But if it's not scabies, then just take a dose of Fallout 4 contraptions, build elevators, ball rolling half tubes, sorting machines. For all that sorting you're doing in Fallout 4. Seriously, how much stuff is there to sort in that game? You running some sort of Fallout 4 sweatshop, you monster? This is one of those things that I'm not gonna play, but I'm very excited to see what other people make. Think of all the things we could sort. Resident Evil, famous for its slow tension building gameplay, has its own fast-paced online competitive shooter spin-off Umbrella Core, which comes out on PS4 and PC also on the 21st. And so does Valhalla Cyberpunk Bartender Action a self-described booze up where you, quote, get to know your clients, their tastes, and prepare the drink that will change their lives. No idea what this game is, but I am absolutely interested in checking it out. Keep your eyes peeled to this channel for a first play. Not that good game one, because we're here now, remember? That's why you're watching this here. Well done. <laughs> June 23rd brings us two PC games in Breached, another spacey isolation survival exploration game, and Prog 1. Play as a computer virus and platform your way to world domination. Heart and Slash is a roguelike brawler coming to Xbox One and PS4 on June 24th, but that has been available on Steam Early Access for a while, and Terraria is making its way over to the Wii U and 3DS. Terraria could be the perfect game to use the Wii U gamepad. It is such a shame I played that game five years ago. And people wonder why that console is doing badly. Mighty Number no. 9 finally comes out tomorrow for the PC and 24th for everything else, but I won't believe it until I've finished it and have been ultimately disappointed by it. And finally, Tokyo Mirage Sessions Hashtag FE, a crossover between Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem, escapes Japan and comes out worldwide on the Wii U on the 25th. Is there anything that I have missed that you are looking forward to? Let me know in the comments. And you've got talk throughs, also put them in my comments. And while you're on the internet, check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and the Steam group. You can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV. Follow Pocket at Nick Boy, at Pierreth, at GG, at Monkey, at Sam Gee. And for the next couple of days, Toby GV. Ooh, sounds sexy when I say it like that, doesn't it, Tobes? Yeah, you got it, Nick. Yeah, it's mainly sexy when I say it, though. There are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's thing of the day was made by Callum Selms. Thank you very much, Callum. If you've made a thing, please send it in. Until tomorrow, Nick Boy out. Mwah! Mwah! Double kiss.